So one more time, I want to say, welcome to Hamlin Assembly of God. And in your Bibles, we're going to be looking at 2 Chronicles chapter 20. We're going to look at the entire chapter. The title of my message today is Pray in Trouble. Pray in Trouble. The Bible says, is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. So they can pray. Prayer throughout the Bible, from the beginning to the end, prayer is so important. Prayer is communication with God. And <clears throat> there's a saying that says there are no atheists in foxholes. And what that's talking about is a foxhole is obviously a, uh, it's a military term for, for when you dig into the ground so you have some protection, um, so you can hide, so you have, have protection against the enemy. And so when you're under fire in a battle, um, there's a saying that says there are no atheists in, in battle, basically, because if you're afraid for your, for your life, then that's oftentimes when people turn to God. Unfortunately, bad things, when bad things happen, that's when people turn to God. When things are going well, sometimes we, even as Christians, we sometimes we take God for granted. We take our relationship for God for granted. Um, now, you guys are here in the building today, and... You guys are watching online, so I'm not really talking about you. If you can hear this message, I'm not talking about you in this next statement. But it's interesting how when the pandemic hit, before the pandemic hit, I think that some people took church attendance more casually than they do now. When all of a sudden you couldn't go to church for two plus months, then when we opened the doors, I was pleasantly surprised the first time we opened the doors how many people came back. And so sometimes when we lose out with something or we, we can't have something, that makes us desire it even more. When you can't spend time with family or you've been away from family for a long time, and then when you finally get to come together, you appreciate it more. So one moral to this story could be, if we want people to come to God, let's just live in troubled times. I'm not going to pray that. But here we are. We're, we're wrapping up the pandemic. There are concerns about the future. There's concerns about coronavirus in the fall, et cetera, et cetera. Some states that have opened up wide. And so, so our country is still under concern. And then in the midst of this, we have violence break out in our country. Would you agree with me that we live in troubled times? We do. And so I take us back to this this Bible story, and I, I hesitate to use the word story because it's a true story. I don't want you to think this is like a fictional story or something that's made up, but this is an actual event that took place in Jewish history. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, let me just begin to read. It says, After this, the Moabites and the Ammonites with some of the Menunites came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. Now, Jehoshaphat is king in Judah. So, the nation of Israel, after Solomon, split into two kingdoms. The southern kingdom was called Judah, and the northern kingdom was called Israel. They're both Israel, but just so you know, you have the two kingdoms. And so he is the, a righteous king in the southern kingdom of Judah. All right? And so Jehoshaphat. Verse 2. Some people came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you. In verse 3. It says, alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. Verse 4, the people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. Now, when faced with trouble, this is a good plan. This is a good plan. If you come together to seek the Lord. First, the king chose to seek the Lord. The king said he resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast. I'm just trying to read the text, and I can't stop preaching. But the people came together to seek the Lord when he proclaimed the fast. Let me just say, now's a good time to fast. As a church, as Christians, we live in perilous times. And you know what's going to fix this country? People surrendering their lives to Jesus Christ. That's what's going to fix this country. You can't legislate righteousness. And what that means is we can't pass laws to make good people. Strict laws aren't going to make people good. It's a heart problem. And people need to resolve in their heart to, to be obedient to God, to serve God, to follow God's way. And so we're living in a time 
where we need God in this country more than ever before in our history. Let me get through the text and then so I can preach it. Verse 5, Then Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in the front of the new courtyard and said, Lord, the God of our ancestors, are you not the God who is in heaven? This is his prayer. You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand. No one can withstand you. Our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? They have lived in it and have built it in this sanctuary in your name, saying, if calamity comes upon us, whether the sword of judgment or plague or famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in our distress and you will hear us and save us. But now here are men from Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whose territory you would not allow Israel to invade when they came to Egypt. So they turned away from them and did not destroy them. Now they are repaying us by coming to drive us out of the possession that you gave us as an inheritance. Our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Does that sound like our times right now? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. For we do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you, speaking to God. Verse 13. All of the men of Judah, with their wives and children and little ones, stood before the Lord. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, a Levite and descendant of Asva, and he stood in the assembly. And this is what the Lord said through this, this Levite. He said, listen, King Jehoshaphat, and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours but God's. Tomorrow, march down against them, and they will be climbing up by the pass of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the gorge of the desert of Jeruel. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your, your positions, stand firm, and see the deliverance the Lord will give you, Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out and face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. Verse 18, Jehoshaphat bowed down with his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. Then some Levites stood up and praised the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. Verse 20, early in the morning they left the desert, and as they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, listen to me, Judah, and people of Jerusalem. Have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets, and you will be successful. After consulting with the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out at the head of the army, saying, give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. Verse 22, listen to this. And as they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who were invading Judah, and they were defeated. The Ammonites and the Moabites rose up against the men of Mount Seir to destroy and annihilate them. And after they finished slaughtering the men from Seir, they helped to destroy one another. When the men of Judah, okay, the, the army, okay, of Judah, God's army, when the men of Judah came to the place that overlooks the desert and looked toward the vast army, they only saw dead bodies lying on the ground. No one had escaped. So Jehoshaphat and his army went to carry off their plunder, and they found among them great amount of equipment and clothing, etc., etc. Verse 27, Then, led by Jehoshaphat, all the men of Judah and Jerusalem returned joyfully to Jerusalem, for the Lord had given them cause to rejoice over their enemies. They entered Jerusalem and they went to the temple of the Lord with harps and lyres and trumpets. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Lord Jesus, I pray, Lord, that you would speak to us from your word. Lord, I pray that we'd receive encouragement from your word. Lord, I pray that you would put on us, Lord, an earnest, an earnest desire to pray and to intercede to you for our country. Lord, I pray that you would win the battle. And Lord, I pray you would guide us in this process. In Jesus' name, amen. 
I want to be brief this morning, which is hard. I'm not by nature brief, because we need to pray. And so I'm just going to let you know at the beginning of this message that, that we're going to spend time in prayer today. We're not just going to preach this word, we're going to put it into practice. I want us to look at this text and see things that we can learn that apply to us and to our situation where we live today. And maybe you're facing a personal crisis. Maybe there's something going on in your life. It's a personal battle. You're at war with something. Whether it's a habit or a situation that's beyond your control. Maybe it's a financial situation. Maybe it's a family situation. I don't know. But if everything's going great for you, if your life is hunky-dory and everything's good, then you can pray for our nation. Because our nation is facing crisis. This morning I want to answer several questions. Six to be exact. You see how this message could get long? I have six points this morning. Six things I want to answer from this scripture. The first question I want to ask is, who is God? Who is God? As we look at, at um, Jehoshaphat's prayer, in verse 5 he says this, Lord, the God of our ancestors, are you not the God who is in heaven? Let me stop there. How many of you are second generation Christians or more? In other words, your parents were Christians or before that. Raise your hands if you're second generation Christians or more. All right, so I'm not dissing the rest of you. If you're a first generation Christian, how many first generation? You guys say, praise God, that's exciting actually. But if we're a second generation Christian or more, that means we have a heritage, okay? Our ancestors or our family came before us, so we have history. We can look back, and I encourage you to do this, especially when you're facing difficult times. Look back and think of what God has done for you. I've mentioned it many times before. It pops in my head again. I'm going to mention it again. Why? I don't know. I'm just going to mention it. I was sitting where Melanie was sitting. Pastor Chris was pastor here, and he was, he was preaching a message. And I was on my way to Massachusetts, and uh, so I stopped here on a Sunday morning, and uh, God spoke to me. God spoke to me. We had a financial need that was impossible in our lives. I had a balloon payment due at the end of December. I didn't know how it was going to happen. And something Pastor Chris said, he quoted Jesus. And I can't, remember the, the, I can't even remember the text because I didn't plan to share this. But I, I held on to those words. Jesus, oh, it was something about Jesus said, said, I don't remember what he said. If it's possible, yeah, it's possible. So I took those words. And, before, and this was mid-December. And you know, God worked a multi-thousand dollar financial miracle in my life before the end of the month. God is good. And I, I want to say this, too. I wasn't in ministry at the time. I was just like y'all. I was just working 40 hours a week at a job, trying to raise my family, just being a person. Sometimes you think that God does things for pastors because pastors are special. Uh, no. We're all people. God works in me, but God wants to work in you the same way. God blesses me. God wants to bless you in that same way. So we have history. And so when we're facing a crisis, we need to remember what God has done in the past. It goes on. Who is God? My, let me get back to the question. Who is God? Are you not the God of heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand and no one can withstand you. Our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land? God did this. God did that. Read the Bible. You see the, the mighty works of God. And if you've been Christian for more than a year, then you should be able to look at your life and see what God has done for you. How God has provided automobiles, how God has provided different things, how God has, has provided ministry opportunity when, when I wanted to be in ministry. Healing miracles. Has God ever healed you? Who is God? God is all-powerful, that's who God is, and God rules over the nations. And God has set this world in motion. And people make bad decisions, from leadership all the way down to ordinary people. And we live as a, in a consequence of these things. But God is still bigger than that. We need to understand that. God is bigger than the coronavirus. There is no reason for a believer to fear the coronavirus. All right? I'm still going to be respectful and wear a mask. I'm not saying that. But I'm not afraid of corona. All right? And I'm not afraid of protests, and I'm not... A, afraid of violent outbreaks. And I lost my fear of violence in high school before I ever did martial arts because I got close to God. 
As a Christian, you can literally say, this is a joke, okay, first of all. But you can literally say, do me a favor, kill me. Right? Because when I die, I got a better place to be. All right? So death, we're not to fear death. Jesus won the victory over death. Paul says, I'm going to glorify God whether I live or whether I die. So as long as I'm alive, I'm going to believe and, and trust in Jesus. I mean, did I say die? As long as I live, I'm going to trust in God. But in my death, I'm going to trust him too. We as believers have nothing to fear because of who God is. The second question, what's the trouble? For Judah, the kingdom of Judah, and for King Jehoshaphat, the problem was, was three nations' armies coming after, coming after them. Three nations' armies whose armies were going to overwhelm Israel. It says literally in the text that, where'd it go? It's, it's in the text. For we have no power, verse 12, we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We might as well give up. There's no way we're going to win. It's impossible. They were facing an impossible situation. What trouble are you facing today? What impossible situation is in your face today? Maybe it's the national problem. We have an election coming up in November. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. I'm not even going to tell you to vote. I'm going to tell you to pray. If you pray and don't vote, you kind of question how that works. But be the answer to your own prayer. But we need to pray for this nation. We need to pray for our future. We need to pray for, for our country, for the people that are lost, for the people that hate each other, for the people who claim they don't hate each other, but they hate each other anyway. People in our country need Jesus. And I meant to mention, I forgot, now I'm just going to insert it. On Saturday, when we do this sign outreach, I know it's, I know it's Independence Day. It's only, I'm only asking for two hours of your time. Um, we're going to go from 11 to 1, actually three hours, if you come at 10 to help us get started. It's from 10 to 1. If you can only come for 15 minutes, please come. Please don't say, oh, Pastor Ken's going to keep us there all day. I, I'm not going to commit to all day. No, I know it's a holiday weekend. I know you may have family plans. And that's why I planned it for right around noontime. So it would be in the morning. And so you still have time to do stuff. I would encourage you to come out and help us share love with people. All right. Back to the message. Third question. Who stood before the Lord? I love this. Who stood before the Lord? In verse 3, the king was alarmed, and he resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast. And verse 4, it said the people of Judah, and Judah's the nation, the people of the nation came together to seek the Lord. And verse 13, verse 13, it says, all the men of Judah, remember, Judah's the nation, all the men of the nation with their wives and their children and their little ones, stood before the Lord. Everybody. We all need to come before the Lord. We all need to be here. I'm glad there's some kids here today. I'm glad we have young people here today. Age doesn't matter. All ages matter, actually. All ages matter. There you go. God wants... God hears the prayer of teenagers. God hears your prayers when you call out to him. God hears the prayers of gray-haired saints, hallelujah, and little kids or young, young people. Not you, Henry, behind you. So we all stand before the Lord. Number, question number four, what did God say? What did God say? First of all, how many of you remember? This is a Pentecostal church. Anybody? This is a Pentecostal church. What does that mean? The word Pentecostal comes from the day of Pentecost when the power of the Holy Spirit was outpoured on the church. And we got a new sign coming. I'm excited about that. It's supposed to be here in July. And it says the name of our church, Hamlin Assembly of God. And right underneath that it says a Pentecostal church. So... We are a Pentecostal church, and why do I bring that up? Because in verse 14, the question is, what did God say? In verse 14, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, I guess. He was a Levite. And Jehaziel said, in verse 15, but before I say what he said, it says the Spirit of the Lord came on him and he spoke. Well, on Pentecost Sunday, 
the Holy Spirit came on 120 people, not just the 11 apostles, the 12 with the replacement, but 120. You know who was in that group? Mary was in that group. Probably all the Marys were in that group. The Holy Spirit came on them and the apostles stood up and they preached on the day of Pentecost. And they preached from Joel chapter 2 and they said, In the last days God will pour out his spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. That means our young people will prophesy. That means men and women will prophesy. You do not have to be a Levite anymore to be used by God. You don't have to be born in a certain family. You don't have to be a second generation Christian for God to use you. And as we pray in a few moments, I'm expecting God to speak to us. Because I believe God put this text on my heart for today, and this is the pattern. I believe this isn't like a magic formula, but this is the pattern that God wants me to share with us today. So what did God say? The Holy Spirit, or the Spirit of the Lord, moved upon this this man, and he said this, listen, King Jehoshaphat, and all you who live in the nation and in this city, okay, Judah's the nation, Jerusalem's the city. I'm using those terms interchangeably. Listen, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours but God's. Do not be afraid. Oh, wait, what's it say at the end of that? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out and face them. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. As believers living today, we have nothing to fear. He said, don't be afraid and don't be discouraged because the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. We don't have to fight the battle. In Romans chapter 8, it says that we are more than conquerors. Do you know what a conqueror is? It's someone who goes out into battle and wins. Do you know what a more than conqueror is? It's someone who doesn't go out into battle and still wins. Right? How can you be more than a conqueror? A more than conqueror is a conqueror is someone who fights and wins. How, how do you get better than winning? If you can win with no effort. Woohoo! I like that. We are more than conquerors. God's going to fight the battle. We don't have to fight. We don't have to struggle. We need to pray, but we don't fight. We don't struggle. The battle is the Lord's. He says, take up your positions and stand firm and see the deliverance the Lord will give you. Hey, we need to take our positions. And right now our position is prayer. And then later their position was worship. And at the end their position was thanksgiving. We need to trust God. We need to, to listen to what God is saying. And that's what God said. So what did they do? What did they do? Verse 18. Jehoshaphat bowed down with his face to the ground. And all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. And then some Levites stood up and praised the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. The king bowed down with his face to the ground. We don't see that in prayer very much, for someone to just flat out lay on the ground, face on the ground. We don't see that. Then the people bowed down, and then the Levites stood up. What's my point this morning? You can pray standing up, you can pray kneeling down, you can pray with your face on the ground. God still hears your prayer. The important thing is to pray. Lillian, can I pick on you? Thank you, Lillian. I'm going to pick on you for a minute. So some people, when they pray, they pace, they walk, okay? So you would think somebody that uses a walker would not be one of those people. But if you come out on Saturday, it's 9 o'clock for prayer, Lillian's doing laps around the sanctuary. Because when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon Lillian, you know, Thank you for letting me use you. I know, you just go to the back, but. You can stand at attention. There's somebody that when they're at prayer, they often, they kneel right there. I love that man. We can kneel, we can kneel at the altar, we can bow down, we can stand, we can pace. And in a few moments when we begin to pray, you pray however God uses you in prayer. All right? 
The position doesn't matter. King Jehoshaphat, the king, he had all authority. He was in charge. Why did he prostrate himself before God? That was humility. He knew he was in charge, and he made himself as low as low. And verse 22, what did they do? And they began to sing and praise the Lord. They began to sing and praise, and the Lord set up ambushes against the enemy. They began to praise. They prostrated themselves. They bowed down. They prayed, and they praised God. That's what they did. So what was the result? What happened in verse 24? When they got there, the battle was over. The enemy was destroyed. And in verse 27, then led by Jehoshaphat, all the men of Judah and Jerusalem returned joyfully to Jerusalem, for the Lord had given them cause to rejoice over their enemies. And they entered Jerusalem and went to the temple of the Lord with harps, lyres, and trumpets. And the last two verses, which I did not ring, read before, says this. And the fear of God came on all surrounding kingdoms when they heard how the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. And the kingdom of Jehoshaphat was at peace. For his God had given him rest on every side. The result was victory. Jehoshaphat proclaimed a fast. Between now and November, as the Lord leads you, you need to fast for this country. If you're physically able to and if you can't food fast social media fast it's easier to give up food right or fast from something else fast from chocolate or coffee give up coffee for three days or something like that no she's not doing it nope so a fast is when we give up something just to, to take the time that we do. So a food fast, the way it works, if I'm going to give up lunches for a week, for example, then during my lunch time, when I normally spend eating for those seven minutes every day, no, I'm just kidding, I actually take a lunch break because I know it's mentally healthy. I do it. I get away from the office. I come back. But during that time, you give it to the Lord and you pray. We need to seek the Lord. We need to seek the Lord for our country. We need to be obedient to him. I have a conclusion somewhere. Here it is. I'm going to ask you to stand with me. I want to review these six questions, and then we're going to take time to pray. And it's early. Look at the, everyone, look at the clock. It's okay. My goal was, was 20 till, and so I've got six minutes to do my conclusion. Just kidding. Who is God? We all have history with God. We have the Bible to tell us, God's, God is all-powerful, okay? There's nothing too big for God. There's nothing impossible for God. God can beat corona. God can, can beat hate. God can bring peace. God can bring victory. God can heal your body. God can work a miracle in court. God can restore your family. God can fix mar marriages. God can meet every financial need. There's nothing too difficult for God. That's who God is. Number two, what's the trouble? I don't know. Our country's in trouble. What's your trouble? Name it to God and give it to God and say, God, here's my trouble. Please deal with it. God, please deal with my problem. Number three, who stood before the Lord? You. You stand before the Lord. I'm going to stand before the Lord. The baby's going to stand before the Lord. That baby's just crying out to God. That baby's fine. All right? Because it was all ages, right? Didn't it say? It should have said babies. Babies, bring your babies to church. Hallelujah. If that baby's distracting you, get over it. Okay? So, all of us, we need to go to the Lord. God wants to hear from you. Everyone say, me. God wants to hear from you. It's not about Pastor Ken praying, or, or Pastor Roy praying, or, or, or someone who's been a saint for 97 years. You know those people? Man, they can pray, right? But God wants to hear from me, and he wants to hear from you. What did God say? God said he would fight for us. And God spoke, and I'm expecting God to speak to us. Maybe it'll be publicly to all of us, or maybe God will speak to you personally right now or in the next 15 or 20 minutes. I believe God is going to speak to us, speak a word of encouragement to us or a word of direction to us. And what did they do? They fasted and they prayed and they worshiped. Some of them laid down, some of them stood up, some of them kneeled down. But they fasted and they prayed and they worshiped God. We must do the same. And the result was simple. It was victory. We need victory. And victory comes from our relationship with God. So I'm going to begin to lead in prayer, and then I'm going to invite you to come to the altars to 
make laps around this sanctuary, to kneel where you are, to kneel here. If you want to lay your face out, that's okay too. If you're a pacer, don't knock anybody down. Keep one eye open, okay? But seriously, this is just a time of prayer. If you don't know what to do, just sit down and just think about what was said and just talk to God like he's a person. Some people think, how do I pray? Just talk to God. And people at home, please, take time to pray with us. Don't just turn us off because this part has changed. We need to pray. You can talk to God. Yeah, he's almighty God, but you know what? He's also your friend. And you can just talk to him. You don't have to have special words. Just talk to God. Talk to God about what your problem is. Talk to God about what you need help with. And let's praise God and let's intercede for our nation, for the world, for Israel, for our community, for our outreach on Saturday. If you run out of things to pray for, go out those glass doors, hang a left, there's a missions board there. Just begin to pray for everyone on that board and that should keep you here till like two o'clock. But we need to pray as a body, as a church, as Christians. We need to lift up our nation and our area and your personal needs. So as the Lord leads you, I'm just going to ask, I'm going to lead in prayer, and you can pray quietly or you can pray loudly, and let's just intercede with the Lord. Lord God, I thank you for your word. Jesus, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that Old Testament story, that true story, God, of how you intervened, and Lord, how you were there for King Jehoshaphat and the nation of Judah. And Lord, as the people cried out to you, young and old alike, male and male and female alike, Lord God, you heard their prayer. And Lord God, you spoke to them, Lord God, and you went out before them, Lord God, and you won the battle for them. Lord, we need the same today. Lord God, we need you to speak to us, Lord God. Give us direction. And Lord God, I pray you you uh, fight the battle for us, Lord. Lord, we need victory, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray against coronavirus. Lord, I thank you that you've protected us as a church. The Lord, I pray you continue to protect us from that. And Lord God, I pray you bring our nation back to a place where it would love and serve you. Lord Jesus, I pray for the hate, Lord God, that's in our country. Lord, I pray that people who hate, Lord God, for people who are passionate and hate, Lord God, I pray, Jesus, you'd come into their lives. Lord, I pray you bring someone into their lives to speak to their hearts. Lord God, I pray they'd get a hug from somebody that knows you, Jesus. And Lord, that someone would share hope with them. Lord, I pray for Saturday, Lord God, as we hold up handmade signs. Lord God, I pray you'd bring people by the church, Lord God, that need uh, an encouraging word, Lord, that they'd stop in and get a hot dog. And Lord God, you'd use us to share with them your love. Lord God, I pray that our nation would see, Jesus, that you love us, but you're calling us to holiness, Lord. You're calling us to repentance. Lord God, that you want us to live the life that you have planned for us. Lord, I just pray, Lord God, you'd work in us, Lord God. Lord, use us in this building today. Lord, online, Lord, use us, Lord God, every one of us. Use us to accomplish your will and purpose, Lord. Jesus, use me and don't refuse me. Lord, surely there's a work that I can do. Lord, I just pray your will be done, Jesus. Have your way in this place.